Listen, I am ready for today's episode because today's episode is going to be more like a pulse check. I have been having this sense in my heart and in my spirit that there's a lot of collective fear going on and you may or may not be feeling it on onset, but once we go through today's podcast, you will find that there's probably some layers of fear that you may have not even recognized because it's buried under so much noise and it's probably buried under a lot of pressure and buried under a lot of you just doing a lot of things to suppress that fear and by staying busy and staying active and doing all these things, but really not facing this pent up emotion of fear. And y'all, like, I know that there's a lot that's going on in the economy right now. I know that there's a lot even going on in people's businesses that is causing this collective fear and It's like this fear that sometimes it's spoken, sometimes it's unspoken, like I said, but I will tell you that it's not even just the ones who, those, those of you who are in those beginning stages of your business, it's a collective thing and it's going around in the really successful businesses and, and all the way down to those in the beginning stages of it. But what I want to remind you is that we operate from a different system as kingdom business builders. And in today's podcast, this pulse check of prayers for your business as we're tapping into fear is really designed to help you to get back into alignment with the King's system and what he has set up for you so that you can truly walk in the abundance, regardless of the season, regardless of the signs of the times, regardless of all the things that everybody is saying, we want to keep in tune with what Father God is saying. And Father God says that in all seasons, as long as we stay connected to him, that we will produce good fruit. And so let's talk about it. And this is going to be an opportunity for you to really do some self-evaluation. And I'll get into that here in just a moment once we we tap in. So let me tell you, get ready to tap in. Get ready to do a pulse check. And as I say that, I'm literally tapping on my pulse on my wrist and tap on those pulses on your neck. And let's reawaken the vision. Let's reawaken your power. Let's re- reawaken your position of you getting in your position of authority, let's reawaken that passion and that vigor that you once had. Let's get out of fear and get back to a place of walking in love, love overflowing. Can you feel that? I hope you can feel that in your body because many of you have gone numb in your businesses Many of you have been under so much pressure that you really can't even feel anymore. And I pray that this podcast blesses you and it gives you back feeling and not the type of feeling of anxiety because those of you who have been feeling, maybe it's been a rapid acceleration of your heart and you've been in a place of anxiety. You've been carrying so many weights. You've been carrying so much baggage and that baggage is the at, at the root of it, at the root of that numbness and at the root of that anxiety, it's fear. Let's talk about it. What's up, leader? Welcome to the Gifted Entrepreneur Show, the dopest podcast on the planet that explores the world of Christian entrepreneurship and reveals secrets to unlocking your unique codes to create generational wealth. I'm your host, LaDondra Hervey, wife, mom, award-winning author, and Christian business coach who's excited to take you on a transformational journey 
of taking bold steps to unlock your unique gifts and pursue your entrepreneurial dreams with unwavering faith. Buckle up. It's time to make your dreams of creating generational wealth a reality. Hey, what's up? Okay, so in today's podcast, listen, I want to do some centering. I want to get us really grounded for what we're about to tap into because this prayers for your business this week is all around fear. And like I talked about in the introduction, there's many of us who are in that place where we're feeling fear and fear is really weighing us down. And that fear is this deep rooted fear that maybe you really haven't been able to verbalize and find the words to define like what's really happening for you. So as we go ahead and get centered in this, I'm going to go ahead and just invite the Holy Spirit in right now. So Father God, we just invite you into this conversation right now. Lord God, as we settle in, Father God, like I'm asking you to calm our nervous system down right now, Father God. Lord, help us to get really, really present with your purpose. Let us get really present with your power. Let us get really, really present with your love, Father God. As we tap into our anchoring scripture, which is 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Father God, help us to really embody that scripture, Father God. Lord God, really help us to really tap into what it means to have a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Lord, any and everywhere where there's distractions that's keeping us from it and baggage that's keeping us from walking in the fullness of your promises. Lord, I ask, Father God, that those be released right now at the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you that there be a liberation and that the weights would just fall off and there'd be this lightness that your daughters and your sons will feel at the sound of my voice, Lord God. And they will start to operate from a different frequency. They will move from the frequency of fear, which is really low. And they will start to elevate and rise up to a to you, which is the higher power, the highest power, the highest frequency we can be in, which is love. Says God is love. You are love, Father God. And we know that when we are in you, we are vibrating from a place of love. Love overflowing. So fill our hearts with so much love right now. So much, so much power, Father God. And let there be just a sound mind as we go through this podcast. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. I hope that you felt that in your bodies. As we are literally getting ready to go in deeper. Because like I said that there's just I'm one thing that I have is I have always had that gift to pick up on energy, like people's energy to not like in a judgmental way, but the energy in the room, the energy in the atmosphere, the the collective energy, like picking those things up and being able to reflect it back to a person in a way that they can truly understand it and make it really practical so they can come out of agreement with those fears. And that is my hope for you today is that I can help you to really identify the areas where you're feeling that fear so that not only you become aware, but now as I talk about in my framework from framework for my book, Powerful Beyond Belief, It's a three-part framework where you literally release the the things that's keeping you from truly walking in the authentic version of yourself. And in that three-part framework, 
I talk about assess you and you becoming aware and you um, secondly you reconciling any and everywhere where there you've been walking in any lies and coming into reconciling into a truth so part one is like that assessing any lies and that have come up against you that's got you out of in a place of disbelief or doubt insecurity fear all of that and then part two is reconciling and coming in agreement with the truth with just the word of god and then three is creating um alignment and so that alignment that's literally us getting in right standing and walking it out walking out the word of god in our life and in our business and so because it's not enough to do that initial work and then not take the actions and, and getting aligned to take the right actions to move us forward. And so you guys, if you want to tap into that book, it's powerful beyond belief and that you'll find that on Amazon. And, um, so that's that part. But when we are really, as we're talking about this, like I literally want you to become aware of the fears that, that you're holding on to that you may not even be able to put words to, but you're feeling it in your body. And like your nervous system is literally giving you signs um, and your body is giving you signs that something is wrong, something is off, and something is not agreeing with that power, love, and sound mind, right? And so the very, and so as I'm going along this, like I'm really gonna give you some tangible ways to look at this. Um, because there's a lot going on in the economy that can bring up fear, like the things that's going on with the wars and the, the inflations and the changes, projected, you know, changes and the trends in the marketplace. And no one really knows like where things are going. Cause on any given day, it feels like it could change. And those uncertainties are really wrecking havoc really on a lot of entrepreneurs and again their heart their mind and their mind will and emotions and their soul like they're having a hard time trying to stay grounded and stay in connected to the initial vision that god has placed on their heart and so you guys as i was you know going through this i was actually on a walk today and the Lord dropped this word in my spirit about the whole fear thing because I literally have been feeling it in my body and I did not realize that I was feeling it like I didn't have words for it I knew something was off but I didn't have words to it and I didn't have words for it I just was like feeling this heaviness in my heart and like this tension and I could feel that there's like this shortness of breath and what I, what had happened was, what had happened was, no, is I had let things like the economy, as far as like what's going on in Israel and all of that, like get in my body. And like, I was even hearing it from like a lot of the spiritual leaders and stuff. And they're like, this is the signs of the times and just all this stuff. And it really started to get in my body because I'm like, okay, well, what do I need to do? I got to get prepared. And so I need to, I'm going to need to start making way more money too, because then I need to like start to triple what I, even what I'm doing. So then there's like this extra storehouse. And then what about this? And like freaking out on the cool, but not really realizing that that's what's happening. And then I'm also like thinking about, cause I'm very future oriented. What does the future look like? And I gotta, you know, I gotta do this for my kids and I gotta do that and just freaking out. And so in the, but didn't realize I was freaking out. Cause like on the outside, cool, calm and collected. Right. And so, but on the inside, there's this tension in my chest. And so I took some time off to just like, really connect with what was happening in my heart. And I realized, okay, it's that. And then there was also some other things that I was feeling disconnected from in my business that was creating this level of fear. And I'm like, hmm, well, let's tap into that. And so that's why I said, we can read this scripture all day long and we can be like, okay, God is not giving me a spirit of fear. And we see like, you know, something that scares us and we quote that. But then how can we really make that tangible and practical so that we can apply these kingdom principles in all areas of our life 
and in in the situations that we need it and so specifically i'm gonna just talk about some areas in um as it relates to your business because when you're feeling fear fear is the absence of love and so my question to you today is where are you feeling an absence of love in your heart where are you feeling an absence of love in your business literally write these questions down because when you can do the heart work, then you will have new revelations that will propel you into another level of liberation to where you start to get in right alignment with the kingdom. You, it, it's If we're really going back and getting grounded, remember Matthew 6 and 33, it says, seek first the kingdom, Just not seek first your feelings, not seek first your fears, not seek first your bills and your financial situation, seek first the kingdom and all its righteousness. And so that is literally us getting in right standing and then all these things will be added. And so as we do this heart check and we're doing the work, this is us, this is a step for us getting into, we've sought out the word and we know that the word says first and foremost that any fear that we're feeling in our body, that's not kingdom. So then now we got to come out of agreement with anything that's not in, that's not kingdom, any and everything that's creating a violation in our heart and in our mind. And it's keeping us disconnected from being in what the being connected to the word of God, which is that power, love and style mind. So now we have to rectify that and create a right alignment in our heart, our mind, our soul, body, all of that, and start to let it all connect. And so when you do these work, the work and you answer these questions yeah, and, and you spend some time with Father God and you allow the Holy Spirit to do an internal work in you, you will find that all these things will truly be added to you. So any and everywhere where you've been feeling fear financially, when you can do the hard work and you create a new awareness and see where you've come out of agreement with the word of God and you've tapped into fear or you got out of alignment, then and you are you can't you repent turn away and you will start to see that hey like the holy spirit will open up your eyes to see hmm here's some other options here's a, here's some wisdom and here's a way through here's a way through because i said when you can put your hope and your confidence in me then you will produce in all season i said when you abide in me that and, and you be the branch and you're not carrying all this weight and you're trying to be, you're not trying to take my job and be the vine, then you will produce good fruit. That's what the word says. And so if you're connected to fear, I'm pretty sure you're trying to be the vine and you're trying to take matters into your own hand. And, or maybe you're even trying to take God's, we talked about this in abiding last week. Maybe you're trying to take God's part and be the uh, maintainer of the garden. It's not your job. Your job is to be connected to the life-giving source and really in, in abiding in him through your relationship and creating those awareness. And through your relationships, you become aware of the areas that you're out of alignment and you're out of agreement with kingdom principles that you be, that is taking you out of your divine position of being a ruler when you are in fear fear is ruling you and you're not in a king's position to rule over fear and when you're in that place then again fear is governing your decision fear is governing your day fear is consuming your mind fear is probably even taking you down in your body and so in your body, you're probably feeling either your fatigue, which is loss of energy. Maybe you have a loss of appetite. Maybe you're uh, overeating and you are, because you're stress eating, you're eating your feelings. Uh, maybe it's that you are not drinking enough water and you're dehydrated because and you're panting throughout the day and not breathing deep enough to allow your uh, nervous system to release all of that pressure, to release all of that fear, to release it all. And so I'm going to go ahead and lay these questions out and I'm just going to lay them out. And so be ready to take notes. And yes, I did a lot of pre-framing because you needed to hear this. Because if I just give you the work, 
and you don't really understand the heart behind the work that you're doing, it's not going to be effective. And so let's talk about it. So the question was, where is there an absence of love? And I want you to say, I want this, this is literally what I want. Where is there an absence of love in my vision? And I want you to go back to the initial vision that God gave you. And I want you to start to think about where is there an absence of love in the vision that God has given me? Maybe there's an absence of love in the vision that God has given you. And the fact that you have felt like you've been in seasons of delay. And so now you're not really connected to the vision and you feel forgotten. And so now there's an absence of, of love and you feel disconnected from it and you're feeling fear because maybe it's not going to come to pass. And some of the signs that you will know that you're feeling an absence of love is that you're out here, you're out here competing and conforming in your business. And so it, it's not that you're so you're not connected and grounded in the vision. You are in fear instead and you're competing to try to keep up with what the market is doing and what your neighbor is doing or you're conforming to try to fit your gifts and your business and uh, model into what the uh what other people's expectations and trends and things that's going on you may be feeling that absence of love with your your uh one of the signs you're feeling that absence of love in your vision is that you're comparing yourself to other people and the way that they're doing things. And so when you get caught up in trying to compare yourself to what other people are doing, then you start to lose yourself in the process. And then you start to hold back on your gifts and you start to hold back in the areas of your unique brilliance and your get, uh, like I want to say your gift zone and you hold back from the transformation that you can truly get uh, bring to the market. So the question is, is where is there an absence of love? to your vision. That's that's when that's the part of the the love. So power, love, sound mind. And so I'm doing them in this order. I, I address love first. Now I'm going to address power. Where is there an absence of power in your business? You will know if there's an absence of power in your business when you're holding back. Like you're holding back parts of you because you're either looking for someone to come and save you and you're like, you're looking for a loan or you're looking for uh, people and things to save you. And so when I say that, like you may be looking for a loan to come save me and you're like, well, I can't get that loan. So I can't, I can't move on the vision. That's a, that's a form of powerlessness. And you, instead of you tapping into that resourcefulness side of you, because he who began a good work in you, he will finish into the end. And when he began a good work in you, then the fact that he gave you that work, the fact that he gave you that vision, he gave you the equipment to fulfill it. But a lot of times we're not being resourceful enough because we're looking for people and things to be our savior instead of us stepping into our kingdom dominion as kings and queens and realizing that Everything that we need to bring, make the vision a reality is already available to me, but may, uh, there's something that I probably need to come out of agreement on so that I can truly see and hear is there something that's blocking my next level of belief and understanding of what I need in order for me to not at, be in a position of powerlessness, but to truly stand in my authority and be the powerful one who and tapping into the mind of Christ and understanding that in him is everything. When I partner with him, all things become a reality. All things becomes possible. And so any and everywhere where you're feeling like there, it's impossible and you're walking in fear, then now you got to get to the root and say, where have I, where, where have I believed a lie? And what is that lie? Is it that you have subscribed to that success is is difficult is hard and so now now you're truly walking as a, a powerless because everything it's like you start to say now you you you've 
that's the lie you believe in. So now you're saying I take two steps forward. Then every time I take two steps forward, it's like I'm taking 10 steps back. That is a sense of powerlessness instead of saying, you know what? Greater is he that is in me than it is in the world. And so whatever is against me, I know that God is for me. And so whatever is against me, I know that God is for me. And so Father God, help open up my eyes to see what you have for me, what you have available for me and what is standing against me. Where is the resistance? Is it like a lot of times we're like, well, it's the enemy. Maybe, maybe it may be the enemy, but maybe the resistance is in you. And so you, in whatever, maybe it's the f external fears that from the worldly systems that you've allowed to enter into your heart. And it's, it's giving you that sense of powerlessness. Like you can't, you feel like, well, I can't control the government. You can't control the government, but the power that is in you, the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the wisdom, the knowledge, and, 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 and everything that he has put on the inside of you, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. And he that's in the world is the world system. He, Satan, he, uh, everything that, and, and the systems that he set up that are out of alignment with the kingdom. And so where is that resistance and where are you straddling the fence? And, and, and being like feeling powerlessness, feeling a sense of powerlessness. And so you get to really identify what is that resistance and what's standing against you. And if it is an unseen force, because the scripture literally says that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but um, the unseen forces and, and principalities and things like that. And principalities, what that is, is it affects a, a, a whole territory. And so, but the cool part about that is that things that can affect the whole territory, it, if you're not subscribing to that system, you literally can put the power of Jesus around it to where it doesn't even touch you. And so like, uh, what is it? Psalms 91, where it talks about like, even though all these things are happening around me, I, I will just literally witness it with my eyes. And so people falling and, you know, things happening and the people dying and things happening in the economy. I will only witness it with my eyes. And so you got to get back to a place to where you're like, yeah, that may be happening. And that play, that principality may be plaguing this in, in this area, but not my house, not my, not my house. We come in under, not my business. We come under the protection. I uh, see what we, we, what you fail to realize is that the word of God, it offers protection from the things that's happening in the world. And so even though these things are happening, you're protected by the word of God when you know how to activate it in your heart and when you know how to activate it in your mind and when you know how to activate it in your family, you know how to activate it in your business, you know how to activate it in your, your, in your team, you are protected. And so you really got to start saying, you know what, God, I take refuge in you. Lord, I, I, I put, I bring my, my business, but, um, behind the like under the protection of your wings lord i ask that your angels i'm i'm quoting some things that's in uh, psalms 91 and i'm quoting it off the top of my hand lord i ask that your angels hands would go up and guard every part of my business god i thank you that you have literally given me dominion to tread over the serpent and and over the lion that's the most powerful that that's the most, the lion is the most powerful spirit and the serpent is the most wittiest spirit. God, I thank you that not only are you giving me the power to tread over, but also to trample over. God, I thank you that you're, I'm so protected that I won't even strike my foot on a stone. God, I thank you. And so when you can start to get there, you regain your sense of power and you remember that you are not subscribing to the systems that's going on in this world in the the in in the resistance and the forces that are trying to take control because you remember that God is in full control and when you can come under his protection now you regain your authority and you start to operate as a ruler the ruler that you've been called to be and then you shift your mindset from powerlessness to now being a great steward and your eyes start to open up to the possibilities 
and how you can be really resourceful to move to the next level of your life and your business. I pray that you are picking up what I'm putting out because I am putting out a lot. And this is how you really activate the word of God in your life and in your business. It's not effective if you don't speak it. It's not effective if you don't come into agreement with it. It's not effective if you don't become aware of the areas that are hindering you from agreeing and coming in under the protection of the word and really walking it out and saying it and and really you just all you're doing is when you're speaking this you're agreeing with heaven and when you agree with heaven heaven it 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 really taps down into your situation and things change so the last part is is now you get to ask yourself where where, where am I, where's there an absence of me walking in the full, uh, the fullness of having a sound mind? Where do I not have a sound mind in my business? Where am I, where am I allowing my thoughts to run chaotic and, and to really, what am I allowing to consume my thoughts? Am I allowing, and you know, you'll know this, am I allowing the fear of not being able to make my mortgage payment? Am I allowing the fear of me not being able to pay my team members? Am I allowing the fear of me not knowing what tomorrow will hold because of what's happening in the economy? Am I allowing uh, the the fear of not knowing where my next client is going to come from? Am I allowing all this noise to cloud my mind and create and when it clouds your mind then your mind starts to your body starts to respond to the things that's going on in your mind and that's when you start to shut down some of us literally shuts down or you may feel this anxiety that starts to well up in you it and that anxiety may show up in tears it may show up in in like a literally full-blown breathing anxiety attack it may show up in you swelling up it shows up in so many ways and or you may hive up you may start to have hives and so it, it's your body is saying hey something is going on in my mind and it's overtaking my mind and I need you to slow down and pay attention to me and grab back control and so what are you allowing? Um, another way to ask this question is, what are you allowing to rule over your thoughts and consume your mind? Now, remember that you literally are a ruler. And so in order for you to be a ruler, you can't allow things to rule over you. You are a ruler. God has given you everything that you need to rule over your situation and your circumstances. So, Bring your nervous system down to be reminded that you have the power to rule in this situation. It doesn't matter how out of control it may feel. It doesn't matter what the doctor's report says. It doesn't matter what your physical circumstances are suggesting to you. It does not matter because all those those is pre are presenting themselves as facts in this physical reality truth is in the heavenly realities all things are possible in Christ and so let me bring my mind back into agreement and in partnership with Christ and let me if identify where am I allowing things to rule over me and let me see where have I put placed my attention on then made bigger then my God, you guys, I can tell you so many times and how I've done this. And it's more times than I even want to admit. And you know what? The crazy part about it is I don't mind admitting it because I want to set someone else free because a lot of times we are feeling shame about the way that we have, we felt or the things that we've been through. You guys, I literally, because let me tell you this, the things that you put your attention on the most and you allow it to cons consume your mind the most and you make it your priority thought, that becomes your God. I'm just telling you now, your little G God, because now those things are ruling over you. And I've done that in so many times. I, I don't, and it's not anything to brag about. It's not okay and it's not cute. But in my, uh, 
in my growth, along my growth journey, I've put so much time and attention on, oh my gosh, I'm not where I'm supposed to be in my business. Oh my gosh, like this is not working out. Oh my gosh, financially, like I'm struggling and financially, I'm not, I don't know where the next this is going to happen. And oh my gosh, and oh my gosh, and just all this stuff. And these things are just ruling over bills and, and next clients and this and that so much that that has become my God. It is where I have put my time and is where I've put my priority because that's all I'm thinking about all day and night. And no wonder that I find myself in a place where I'm anxious and um, I'm yelling at the, you know, you may find yourself where you're yelling at the kids and they've done something so simple and you're yelling at your husband and it's like, he, you know, he didn't do nothing major, but you're so on fire within yourself because your nervous system is in fight, fight, or flee. It's in survival mode. And it's like, these things are governing my mind. And all I'm trying to do is get back to a place of safety. But I don't even know where safety is because I've been in this place for so long. And so now I feel like I am totally out of control and I no longer have a sound mind. When you don't have a sound mind, things govern you. So now that shows that there's a misappropriation of trust. So where have you put your confidence in something else instead of putting your confidence and hope in the one living God who makes again all things possible? Your hope should be in him in all season and all times. And you should not be seeking out your bills. You should not be seeking out the things that are worth. You shouldn't even in that the verses, um, before Matthew 6 and 33, where it talks about seeking the kingdom first, he said, don't worry about these things. He was saying, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about all of the, uh, of these things. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. But yet when we tap into worry, we get out of a sound mind position and we focus on the things and not the God that make all things possible. We don't focus on the king system that has been set up for our true success to really where things are added it to us and we're not things are not being subtracted from us in our mind body spirit and physical realities and so we just need to wherever that's happened at this let's shift the let's shift it come out agreement with all the thoughts that you've allowed to rule over you repent you're coming out of agreement you're turning away from that old system that old way of thinking and then you're coming into agreement with the word of God and you're saying, you know what, God, I thank you that you've given me a spirit of power, love and sound mind. God, I thank you that I truly am a ruler and God, I thank you that I truly am the head and not the tail and I am the uh, lender and not the borrower. I thank you that even though all these things are going over in Israel and everywhere else in the world that Literally, I will be in a position where I will be able to lend to the nations. I will be so good and financially that I'm able to lend to the nations. God, I thank you that I am, am so solid in my mind, Father God, that you're giving me wisdom, Father God, to not be a part of the problem in the way that I'm thinking, but God, to rise above all of the doys and, and, and everything that's happening here that you've already prophesied that would happen but God, I thank you that I'm in a position to where I literally am able to, to, to send resources. Father God, I have time that's available because I've bought my time back in, in, in through the, my business and serving. And God, I thank you that I not only get to lend and re, uh, resources, Father God, and be a blessing there, but I also get to lend my time. I get to lend my talent. God, I thank you. Do you see how you shift the atmosphere of your heart and your mind and you come out of agreement with fear? Listen, there's so much, so many things that's going on in the world as we talked about. And I will tell you that one of the greatest strategies to combat all of that is first and foremost, seek first the kingdom, spend time in understanding the word of God and how it applies to your unique situation. But the second way is to partner and come in agreement with like-minded believers who are walking their talk. Literally when I was doing an assessment 
today, just because in my mind, I was thinking, I was like, and I was just going through in the fear, and I was like, you know, when you're in fear, you're striving. And the thing about that is I was like, even when I look in the church, I see a lot of pastors and leaders striving. They're in fear. They're striving and in fear just as much as those who are in the corporation. And I was like, God, it just was a heavy burden on my heart because I was like, that's not the kingdom way. I looked and I was thinking, there's not very many examples out here that really, you really look at it, man, they're not striving, but they're really abiding in you. And they're not really in that place of fear and operating from the world system. So this is an opportunity for us as kingdom believers to rise up and be that example to the world and help them to come out agreement. And we do that as being a collective. And we do that by forming those bonds and those relationships. Jesus had an inner circle that he was able to be able to process and pray and to share his innermost things. And the same is true for us. If he had a inner circle to set him up for success and to carry out the vision that God placed in his heart, you too need the same thing. And it really helps us to combat that fear. And when we get in those places to where we're under attack, where we you can come in alignment with your brothers and sisters and stand back to back and they have a word of encouragement or they have wisdom to share for your specific situation or they have a word of knowledge that's specific to you or they have resources that's available. If you're needing that and you're feeling like I'm lacking that in my life and in my business, I feel like I'm the strongest one and, I'm, and that's part of the reason why I'm in this place of fear and why my nervous system is just all over the place and why my mind is all over the place and why I don't feel that power, love, and sound mind and I'm literally operating in fear. And when I put my programs out there, like I'm coming from fear because I feel powerless when I look at the competition. I feel powerless when I look at all these things. we got to be reminded that we're not powerless. And when we're in the right community, then the, the, our community will remind us that you are a ruler and they'll, they'll start to help you to understand the areas where you literally have that dominion and help you to get right back in your rightly aligned position as a king, as a queen. And so if you're needing that, I want to invite you to figure out which way is best for you to partner with us. Like we have several ways in which you can partner with us. The best way is you're either coming in in our uh, six month program or our 12 month program. You'll see the link for that in a one on one or in our 12 month mastermind. With like, I, you're you will see a total of the difference in your business because we're not just speak about strategy uh, without uh, speaking to that Christ is the first strategy, He is the strategy, and we build from there. And we, we really deal with things like what we're talking about today. And so I'm not going to say, hey, go out there and sell this program when you are all jacked up in your, in your internals. And so we really deal with those internal things and, and really create an alignment to get in right standing with the kingdom of God so that you're building on a solid foundation. Or you can literally, if you know, you're like, hey, like I just right now I'm financially strapped. I don't know, but I do need to take a step. Join us in the Kingdom Collaborators Network. Literally, I'm telling you now, that is the most accessible accessible program, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be a part of that and and connecting with that like as part of your strategy, regardless of where you are. It's literally between fifteen to twenty five dollars. It just depends on the level that you join, and you there's so much support from the ladies in the group and how we roll there. But if you really want deep, deep, deep dive then you want to partner with us in the one-on-one um, or the mastermind. And so you look and see what's right for you, but don't stay stuck. Don't stay stuck in fear. Don't stay stuck striving. Don't stay stuck when there's help and there's support and there's a system set up for your success. And part of that system is coming into community and collaboration with the right inner circle that's going to help you to elevate. Pray that this episode has been a blessing to you. And I would really love to know 
on if you share on social media let me know what was that you can do instagram you can do facebook what was your biggest takeaway and why did that episode feel juicy or what if so please do me a favor and take 30 seconds to write a review your review helps us to spread the mission of creating generational wealth around the world And if you tag me on IG stories, I'll be sure to reshare the love. And don't forget to join our Kingdom Collaborators Network, where we're coming together to intentionally collaborate to grow our business. Until next time, remember, for with Christ, nothing is impossible.